In this video we will take a look at how we can model, render and composite this Pokeball here all inside of Houdini. Let's begin. I'm now inside of Houdini and my interface might look a bit different from yours. That's because I'm using some custom settings. So just so we are all on the same page, let's come up to this build drop down here and let's choose the modeling interface. Just going to drag this window a bit to adjust the size. And the first thing I would like to do is come into our viewport here and press the D key. And in the background tab, let's go to the front here. And I'm going to load in a, an image of what we are going to be modeling. So I have an image of a Pokeball here. And you can notice that there is no change in the viewport. That's because we have to press space and the three key, the number three. And now you can see we have this picture loaded in inside of our scene here. Go ahead and close our display options. And we can see that the base shape that is making up this ball is going to be just a regular sphere. To create this, I'm going to press the C key, go down to the Create tab, and let's create a sphere. And I'll just press Enter to drop this in our scene. We can see that this has created a new geometry object for us here. So let's dive inside. And this is the object that we have created. The first thing I want to do is come into our viewport here and press the W key to enter the wireframe mode just so we can see the picture behind. And we can see we have two problems. The picture is not aligned properly to the center of our sphere and the sphere is rotated the wrong way. So let's start off by just rotating the sphere 90 degrees on the X axis. And I'm going to press the D key again and in the front tab Let's just change the image offset and image scale to match with this ring here that we have in the middle of our sphere. I'm using the middle mouse button and dragging to adjust this incrementally. Something like this would be fine. I mean, this doesn't have to be perfect. Just get as close as you can. We're going to start off by modeling this top red part of the ball here. And the first thing I would like to do is just add an edge loop that follows the curvature of this top part here. Press the C key, go to the edges here, and let's press the edge loop. And I'm going to create an edge loop exactly where this curvature is happening. Somewhere around here. Now let's come into selection mode by pressing S. And let's just isolate all of the polygons that are going to be part of this top shell here. I'm also going to want to deselect some of the polygons in front here. So let's just press this eye icon here to only select the visible parts. And I'll use the brush select tool here. And holding control, I'm just going to de deselect all of the polygons in the front here. That's not a part of the red shell. So when we have all of these selected, I'll press the delete key. We can see this has created a blast node for us here to the side in our node network and make sure this is set to delete non-selected. So we can see we now have isolated just the parts that we want to be working on at this moment. And we can see we have an issue where the lower part of this ball is not starting where they should be. So let's again press S to enter selection mode. Let's turn off this I now. Let's select everything. We can also press N to select everything. And I'm going to press the C key and let's go to polygons and clip. And now we can adjust this clip to match where the picture is starting here. Somewhere around here. And let's again press S. Make sure everything is selected again with the N key. And let's press C, come to polygons and do a polygon extrude. And I can just click in the viewport and start adjusting this to extrude this face inwards or outwards. So let's maybe do a distance of 0 0.02 here. And I'll press space and one to enter a perspective viewport. And we can see that we have extruded this face, but we have an issue where the inside is hollow. So this is a good thing to remember. Always check this output back here when you want to have a filled shape. Another thing we could do is bevel this shape a bit. So again, press S. And this time I'm going to press the three key to enter edge selection mode. And I'll press N to select everything. Go to the C menu polygons and poly bevel. And again, I can click in the viewport and start dragging this around and this is going to bevel our shape. But we don't want to be bevel all of these edges here, right? So we have this exclusions options inside of the poly bevel node and we can choose this ignore flat edges. And let's just adjust this th threshold a bit. So we're only selecting the 
faces that we want on the edges here. Let's also give this a division of two. You can also adjust the bevel division by using your mouse wheel in the scene viewer. Set this to two and give this a reasonable bevel like this. Something else we can do is just again press S to enter selection mode. Again, I'll go back to polygon selection mode by pressing four and let's press the N key to select everything. And let's just give this a subdivide. So I'll press tab and search for subdivide. And we can see we have subdivided this mesh and made it a bit smoother. You can even give this a depth of two if you want to make it even more subdivided. And this is beginning to look like the top part of our bowl. Something we usually want to do in Houdini is just give our geometry some normals. So we can come into our node viewer here and let's create a normal node. And let's set this to face area and maybe give this a cusp angle of 35. Let's finish off by giving this a color. Let's make this a red color. And this is our top part. So we can create a null node after our color node here. And let's call this out top. So we have this. And let's start working on the bottom part. And we can see that this is basically just exactly the same as our top part. So what we can do is after our normal node here, before we give it the color, I can create a mirror node off to the side. And I want to set the direction to be on the Y axis like such. And we can see we have successfully mirrored this geometry to match our reference. We just have to make sure we uncheck this keep original so we only keep the bottom part. I'll just copy this color node paste it here and let's connect this to the mirror node. I'll just right click this color and set this to white. I'll also reuse this null node here and let's call this out bottom. Now if we want to view both of these at the same time we can select both of these nulls here. Let's drag down from one of them and I'm going to alt and left click to create a merge node. And now we can see we have both of our top and the bottom part merged together and we can see both of them. Now for this inner part here, we actually already have this because we have our base sphere here, right? And this is basically all we're going to be needing. But the thing is, I don't really like the topology of this. So what we can actually do is just branch off from the side of our original sphere. And let's create a new sphere. Make sure that it's connected like this. And this is going to create a new sphere, but matching the size and position of our input geometry. And I want to set this sphere to not be a polygon mesh, but a polygon like this. And we can increase the resolution, maybe 25. And we can see we have a sphere with a really nice topology, which is taking our original sphere as its reference geometry. Let's bring this down a bit. And I'm just going to reuse the normal node and the color node. So control C, control V off to the side and to disconnect these nodes from the parent I can press the Y key and just cut this wire and the opposite of the Y key is the J key so we can actually connect nodes in this way so I can press the J key and I can sew this node into this node and that's going to connect them like this. The color is a bit off so again let's come to this color maybe give this a dark gray color like this and this is everything we need for this black inside part here. Again let's output this with a null. Let's call this out inside and we can merge this together with our two other parts. Select this merge node and press the R key to view it and we can see our pokeball is starting to really take shape. Now the only thing we are missing is this button in the middle that we can see here. And in order to model this, I'm also going to use the base sphere from where we did the edge loop. So we can see that we have this inner circle in here, which is basically just matching the size of the button. So what we can do is let's press the S key and I'm inside of the polygon selection mode here. Go back to brush select and press the I here so I don't select any faces behind. I'll just select all of these polygons in the middle and I'll press the delete key. Just shake this new blast node here to disconnect it and we have to reconnect it like this. And I'll press space and one and we can see we have extracted just the piece we want to be working on. Let's press W to exit the wireframe mode and we can see that 
if we look at this from the side, we have a pointy tip and we actually don't want this. And we actually don't want any of these inner ed edges either. So what we can actually do to remove all of the inner edges and just keep the base shape is use a node called the divide node right here. And let's turn off the convex polygons and I'll only turn on the removed shared edges here. And we can see we're only left with the shape of our button and none of the inner edges. Now we can actually see that this is a very jagged circle. And you might think that we should subdivide this to make this smoother, but an even better way to do this, we can use the resample node. And if I press this point here to visualize our points, and I start adjusting this length parameter, we can see we have smoothened this out a bit and given it much higher resolution. But we can see we still have some of these pointy tips here, and a way we can fix this is to change this treat polygon S here, to subdivision curves. And this is going to smooth out the result of this node. Now to actually model the button, let's press S and select our polygon. And again, I'll go into the C menu, go to polygons and poly extrude, and I'll extrude this a bit. Make sure we tick output back on, and maybe I'll set the distance to be 0 0.02, like this. And what we can do to repeat this same tool is to press the Q key, which is going to create another poly extrude node. It's basically just a repetition of the previous node you created. And I'll start scrolling my scroll wheel, holding shift. Let's maybe make this inset 0 0.04. And again, I'll press the Q key and let's extrude this one last time. Something like this. And this is basically everything we need for our button. Again, I'll press S, go into edge selection with three key. And I'll press the N key to select every edge. And let's use the C menu again and just bevel this. Again, we want to turn on the exclusions. So we only have these very sharp edges. Let's give this a slight bevel. Use the mouse wheel to change the divisions. Maybe give this four divisions in this case. And I'll set the distance to be 0 0.005. And this is basically everything we need. So let's again just copy our normal node and our color node from the other setup. Copy paste it down here. And let's also output this with a null. Call this out button. And we'll also connect this to our merge down here. Let's also change the color to again just be a white like this. And let's look at our final result. We can see we have finished our Pokeball model. We can output this entire model with a, an output node. And let's also just organize this a bit. And I'm going to give each individual part a respective group so we can assign different materials to them when we are rendering. So let's create a group node. First one is going to be the inside group. Copy paste the same node. This is the bottom group top group and the button. Let's also dive back up and just name this object Pokeball. And in the next video, let's take a look at rendering and compositing.